In this lesson, we will learn about multiplying decimals. There are two strategies. We'll take a look at the first one, the estimation method, by multiplying a decimal and a whole number. In the estimation method, the first thing we want to do is turn our decimal into a whole number that's really easy to work with. In this example, 42 and 1 tenth, 42 and 1 tenth is really close to 40. Now we're going to leave the 3 as it is, and we'll multiply those two together. Now this should be mental math, but I'll write it out here for you. 4 times 3 is 12, tack on the 0. So our estimated answer is 120. This estimate is going to help us decide where to put the decimal point at the end of doing the actual problem. And when doing the actual problem, we ignore the decimal point. We don't look at it and we multiply it as if it were, in this case, a three-digit number times a one-digit number. Three times one is three, three times two is six, and three times four is twelve. Now I decide where to put the decimal point based on the estimate that I have right here. I need my answer to be as close to 120 as possible, and the only way to get that is to put the decimal point right here, 126 and 3 tenths. Here's another example, 29 and 8 tenths times 6. Again, I want to make my decimal a whole number that's really easy to work with. Now, 29 and 8 tenths is really close to 30. And if I were to multiply that by 6, my estimated answer would be 180. Now when we actually solve the problem, we'll use that 180 estimate to decide where the decimal point goes. After multiplying the two numbers, I get 1788 as my answer. But that's by ignoring the decimal point. Now I need to figure out where to put the decimal point based on my estimate of 180. I could put it here, I could put it between the 1 and 7, I could, between, could put it between the 7 and the 8, I could put it between the 8 and the 8, or I could put it at the very end. Now only one of those answers is going to get me close to 180. And that's right here, 178.8. And that's how you do the estimation method. Of course, there is a shortcut method to multiplying decimals, and I'll show you that now. In the shortcut method, you don't make an estimate of your answer. You just ignore the decimal point and multiply the numbers. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus 5 is 32. 9 times 7 is 63. Plus 3 more is 66. So 73.6 times 9 uh, or 736 times 9 is 6624. Now I have to decide where the decimal point goes. Well, here's the easier shortcut method. I figure out how many decimal places there are in each of the numbers that I'm multiplying together. In this case, with 73.6, there is one place after the decimal. With 9, there's no places after the decimal. So with this one here, I need to come in one place to make sure my answer has one decimal place as well. So in my problem, there's one decimal place here. So in my answer, there has to be one decimal place. So 73.6 times 9 is 662.4. Let's try that shortcut method again. In this case, I have 5 and 84 hundredths times 7 tenths. By multiplying the problem, I get 4088 as my uh, temporary answer. Now, just like I did in the last problem, I take a look at how many decimal places there are in each of our numbers in the problem. There's one here, and there's one here. So there's two decimal places in the first number. And there's one decimal place in the second number. If 
for a total of three decimal places. So my answer has to have three decimal places, starting from the right. This would be one, this would be two, this would be three. So the decimal, the decimal point goes right there. 4.088 is the answer to the problem. There's two decimal places in the first number, one decimal place in the second number for a total of three decimal places, and I need my answer then to have three decimal places. And those are the two strategies for multiplying decimals.